Can you save money by tying your own flies? If you were to ask around, you're gonna get a bunch of different responses and opinions ranging from absolutely not to 100% yes. So which is it? My name is Alex and I'm part of the team here at Ventures Fly Co. And as a fly fishing company that has an entire team of fly tires that are cranking out flies for our fly collections, this is a question that we wrestle with every single day. And so let's answer this question and dive right in to section two of module five of our beginner fly tying masterclass. I assume if you're watching this video that you're not a fly fishing company, you're not trying to commercially produce your own flies or sell them. And so we're gonna come at this question from the perspective of an everyday fly angler. Maybe you're looking to tie up a few flies for that weekly or that monthly trip to the river and trying to save a few bucks. And so if that sounds like you, let's just cut to the chase. Can you save money by tying your own flies? The short answer is yes, absolutely. 100% you can save money tying your own flies. But there are a few conditions that need to be met in order to make this a true statement. So first, let's talk about the startup costs. So in order to start tying flies, you're obviously going to need a vise, which is gonna hold the hook while you're tying, and some tools. And it's at this point where a lot of new tires make a mistake. Instead of going with a high quality vise and tools that are gonna last five, maybe even 10 years, they go with a low budget vise and tool kit that wear out after only about a year or two. And the reason this is important is because those people on the no end of the spectrum saying that you can't save money tying your own flies, they say it's impossible because of the equipment startup costs. But let's assume that you get a high quality vise for around 200 bucks and a high end tool kit for about 75. That's a total of $275. Okay, it's a bit of an investment, but now let's play out a real life scenario. Let's say your favorite time to tie flies is on a lazy Sunday afternoon. After about six flies, you're kind of over it, you want to do something else, but you're really consistent. You tie those six flies every single week. And so after a year, you've tied up 312 flies. And now this is where the vise and the tool quality come into play. We're gonna say you invested in that vise and those tools, and they're gonna last at least 10 years. So in those 10 years, you'll have tied up 3,120 flies. So now let's take our $275, divide that by 3,120 flies. We're looking at about nine cents per fly. If you take care of that vice and those tools, they're probably gonna last well beyond 3,000 flies. So depending on what you usually buy your flies for, nine cents per fly isn't bad at all. Based off this line of thinking, I can't really see why equipment startup costs would be the reason why you can't save money tying your own flies. So this leads us into where the majority of the fly tying cost debate happens, and that's material costs. So here we have a classic zebra midge, black and silver. What do you need to tie it? Keeping it simple, you'll need hooks, beads, thread, and wire. Now. Before anybody starts cranking out a novel in the comment section, I just wanna say throughout these examples that all of the prices that I'm about to share are general estimations. I went through a few websites, I visited a few retail stores, and I put together a list and created an average retail price. I didn't just pull these out of a hat, but I also didn't try and find any deals or do any bargain shopping or buy in bulk. So that being said, we've got hooks, beads, thread, and wire. Let's start with the easy ones, hooks and beads. Hooks usually come in packs of 25 and the average retail price is about eight bucks. So this comes out to be about 32 cents per fly. Beads come in a bunch of different packs, but for this example, we're gonna say a pack of 24 brass beads has an average retail price of about 350. So that's about 15 cents per fly. Now this is where things start to get a little bit more difficult. First, we'll tackle the thread. Let's say I purchase a 200 yard spool of 72 denier thread for about four bucks. 
but how many flies am I gonna be able to tie with 200 yards of thread? So for this example, I actually tied up a zebra mage and then snipped off the thread before I whip finished and then unwound the entire fly and then measured how much thread I used, which was about 43 inches. And if we convert that into yards, that's 1.2 yards. Now, obviously this can vary depending on the fly tire or the thread size or the pattern that you're tying, but this is probably a pretty good estimation and a few inches here and there is probably gonna be quite negligible in our final calculation. Okay, so 1.2 yards per fly, 200 yard spool of thread. We're gonna be able to tie up about 167 zebra midges. And this comes out to be about two cents per fly. And now the wire, let's say I pick up a 15 yard spool of small wire for three bucks. And then I snip off about two and a half inches or about 0.07 yards. We'll have enough for 214 zebra midges. And this comes out to about a cent per fly. Now, if we do some simple math, you're into materials for about $18.50 total, which comes out to be about 50 cents per fly. But because we only had 24 beads, we're gonna end up with some leftovers. You've got one extra hook, you've got some extra thread, and you've got some extra wire. And that 50 cents per fly, that can be a little deceiving because that's assuming that we use the entire spool of thread and wire. And that it's not just gonna sit on your tying desk for the next eight years. This is where all the debate comes from on whether you can save money tying your own flies or not. Because regardless of if you used all that thread or all that wire, you've already spent money on bulk materials. You've already spent that $18.50 up front. After tying those 24 zebra midges, you're actually sitting at about 77 cents per fly, which is still pretty good, but it's only once you use the leftover hook, thread, and wire that you get down to that 50 cents per fly. Where the majority of fly tires end up, myself included, is you wanna tie a couple dry flies, a couple of nymph patterns, a few classic streamers, or you get online and you see that new blue winged olive pattern that's going to be absolutely perfect for the hatch this month. And little by little, you start to accumulate a giant collection of materials a large percentage of which are only used for a couple of different patterns or that you're never gonna get through. And so just to drive this point home, we're gonna go over one more example. So let's say your goal is to fill up a dry fly box and be ready for most of the major hatches this year. So you write down a few patterns and the sizes that you like to fish. So my list would look something like this. Parachute Adams in sizes 12 to 18, Blue Wing Olive size 16 to 20, Elkhart Caddis, size 12 to 16, PMD, size 14 and 16, and Orange Stimulator, size eight. There are other materials needed to tie these patterns, but we're just gonna keep it simple and focus on three of the major materials, and that's hooks, dubbing, and hackle. So hooks. If we're hoping to tie up all of these sizes, you're gonna have to pick up a separate pack for each size. That's six packs of hooks. And if we go with our standard $8 retail price, that comes out to 48 bucks. Now, if we fill up our entire dry fly box for the year, 48 bucks, it's not too bad. But keep in mind that if you don't tie up 25 of each size, you're gonna have extras. Now let's talk dubbing. Luckily, they're all dry flies, so we only need to worry about super fine dubbing. But for the parachute Adams, you'll need Adams Gray, Blue Wing Olive, Brown Olive, Elk Hair Caddis, Brown, PMD, PMD, Stimulator, Fluorescent Orange. Now luckily, dubbing isn't super expensive as far as materials go. You're looking at about two to three bucks each bag, so a total investment of about $15. But the point here is now you have five different bags of dubbing in your material collection, and even small bags of dubbing like this have enough to tie dozens, if not hundreds of flies. And so I'd be surprised if you got through an entire bag of dubbing in a year or two, or five. And the last material we'll talk about is hackle. For the parachute atoms, you'll need some grizzly and brown. Blue wing olive, you'll need some medium or dark dun. Elk hair caddis, brown, PMD, light dun or cream, stimulator, grizzly and brown. 
But to simplify things and try to save us some money, let's just say we're going to use medium done for both the blue winged olive and PMB. Let's not forget that we're trying to add a good variety of sizes to our box, which means we'll need the appropriate sized hackle feathers. So with that color change and the sizes, our shopping list is as follows. And when it comes to dry fly hackle, we've got two options. You can either go with something like a Whiting 100 pack, which only has hackle feathers of a specific size and color. You can tie about 100 flies and each is about 20 bucks. So if we went down this route, you would need one pack for each individual color and size. So we would need 14 different packs, which would come out to be a total of $280. And being able to tie 1,400 flies, it comes out to about 20 cents per fly. Route number two would be to pick up something like a whiting dry fly cape. What makes a cape unique is the variety of sizes it offers. So instead of needing to buy a bunch of different packs and a bunch of different sizes, we only need to worry about colors. So we would need three capes, one grizzly, one brown, one medium done. And depending on the quality and grade, you can usually pick up a good cape for about 70 to 80 bucks. So three capes at $80, that comes out to 240 bucks. Now, when it comes to cost per fly, this is hard because each cape is a little bit different. But if we use a guesstimation, erring on the low side, let's say you can tie up at least 600 flies per cape. So $240 divided by 1,800 flies, that's about 13 cents per fly. Now, whether you go down the 100 pack or the cape route, let's think about this. 1,400 and 1,800 dry flies? Even I don't get caught in that many tree branches. And so it's pretty obvious. Again, we've run into the situation where the cost per fly, it's pretty low, but We've already paid that $240 or $280 up front, and the likelihood of us getting through all of those materials, all of those hackle feathers, it's pretty low. Now that we've analyzed the costs associated with equipment and materials and run through a few examples, what are the major takeaways? On one side, you can save money tying your own flies if you, one, have a long enough time horizon. So you see that equipment and materials as a 10 plus year investment. And you eventually use all the materials that you buy. And then number two, you're very disciplined and intentional. You only buy the materials that you need. You only tie the patterns that you use the most often. And you share materials between patterns, like using the medium done instead of light done on the PMD. And on the other side, you won't save money tying your own flies if you, one, want to save in the short term. So that's upgrading or buying new equipment or you never use all your materials. And two, you like to experiment and try new things. You buy a lot of new materials, you tie a lot of patterns and you follow every single recipe to the letter. The reality is if you're like me and if you're like most other anglers that tie their own flies, you're gonna end up spending more money than you want to. You're gonna end up with more materials than you need or even know what to do with and be totally fine with it. Because the reason I personally tie my own flies isn't to save money. In fact, there are four different reasons why I tie my own flies, why you might like to do the same. And we're gonna talk all about it in the next section. Check it out right here.